No, I don't paint. What I do, I make things. With my mind, I'm able to force something into reality. In the era of reality television shows, the uniqueness of the Brown family surviving in the wilderness as shown in the series Alaskan Bush People caught the interest of millions of viewers. Living off the grid in the 21st century is a really challenging task and one not understood by most urban dwellers. But this family is claimed to be the real deal. The patriarch Billy Brown and his wife Amy Brown raised their children away from the convenience of modern technology. The TV series premiered in 2014 and was shown on the Discovery Channel for 12 seasons. Through the success of the show, the family became famous and each member earned a significant amount of money from it. In 1983, Billy and Amy made a life-changing move from Texas to the Copper River Valley in the wilderness of Alaska, where they raised their family. The couple had seven children, Matthew, William, Joshua Bam Bam, Solomon Isaiah Freedom, Gabriel Starbuck, Noah Darkcloud, Snowbird, and the youngest, a daughter named Mary Christmas Catherine Raindrop. The kids were taught how to fend for themselves as they lived in a community called Brownstone, located in a remote area in southern Alaska, about a 20-minute boat ride to go to the nearest town. In their own community, only the two girls, Snowbird and Rain, lived with their parents in a two-story home. Their five sons lived in their own preferred home quarters that were separately built. They had the convenience of using a cranky portable generator. If there was one thing that the Browns matriarch misses, it was having running water inside the house. However, their children were raised believing that whatever they needed, they could create. The family knew the extreme danger that they were being exposed to, living off the grid, but they wouldn't have it any other way. The TV show may have been categorized under the documentary reality genre, but there's a popular theory that everything that happened on the show was scripted. Certainly, the family issues that were featured could rival that of any long-term daily drama or soap opera on TV. In 2016, people were shocked to find out that Billy and his son Bam were sentenced to 30 days in prison and 40 hours of community service for fraud. Apparently, they lied about their residency location when Alaska granted annual oil revenue checks to its residents. They filed to get their share of dividends when they didn't have the required number of years or days per year as a resident in the region. Other members of the family were supposed to be charged as well, but the two men pleaded guilty to keep the rest of the family from being involved in the case. Billy said that due to their style of living, he must have been confused about the dates and years of residency in Alaska. One of the darkest moments in the life of the Brown family was when Amy was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2017. As she sought medical treatment in California, the whole family didn't have any choice but to move to the North Cascade Mountains of Washington State and live on a 450-acre lot, 180 hectares, to be near her. Amy had chemotherapy five times a week for four months to prolong her life, as at that time, she was given a very low chance of being cured. Billy was distraught at the thought of losing his wife. Fortunately, she responded well to the treatment and has been in remission. The eldest child, Matt, has been dealing with a drinking problem that started in 2016. He hung out with the wrong crowd, but when he realized he had a problem, he confessed to his parents. He reportedly checked into a rehab facility three times from 2016 to 2019. He was doing great back in July 2020 as he shared via his Instagram account that he had been sober for the past couple of years after his last Betty Ford stint. However, it was decided that it would be best if he didn't return to the show. Initially, some fans questioned it, but when his rape allegations were revealed to the public, everyone understood the decision. Apparently, the cases of alleged sexual abuse happened just three days apart in 2018. The first accuser, Jessica Jurgis, was a former personal assistant of the Brown family in their TV show. She said that they were drinking and swimming in the pool when Matt grabbed her, ripped her swimsuit, and proceeded to rape her. She was only able to escape when Shelley Dawn Early, a former manager of the family, arrived and grabbed Matt's hair. He was all in tears when he realized what he had done. The second accuser was Shelley herself, who shared that three days after the first incident happened, Matt allegedly raped her, knowing she couldn't fight him off due to her hip replacement that made her legs weak. He was quite drunk at the time, but after the incident, he insisted that Shelley was the one who raped him. However, the DA in the Los Angeles County declined to prosecute, and the two victims said that even authorities failed to protect them. Noah and his wife, Rain, not to be confused with Noah's sister, Rain, left Brownstone and moved to Colorado to raise their family. According to real estate papers, the Colorado property was said to have been transferred to Noah without him spending a dime. 
Among all the Browns' children, it was the youngest son, Billy, who gave Amy their first grandchild, and people believe that it was the reason the property was gifted to Noah. There were rumors that Noah's decision to transfer to Colorado was mainly due to the animosity between his sister, Snowbird, and his wife. Some people also felt that Amy was meddling too much in how Noah should raise his child, and Billy was insisting that his grandson appear in the show as soon as possible. Noah dismissed these theories and said that his wife didn't have any problem with her in-laws. He just wanted to take a breather, especially since he's raising his own family now. In the TV series Alaskan Bush People, production people had struck a gold mine when it was revealed that Billy Brown had a secret family. He had been married to a minor named Brenda and had two daughters, Twyla and Brandy. His eldest child made a cameo appearance in the show in 2016. Even though Twyla had not seen her father in almost 30 years, they failed to mention the other daughter for undisclosed reasons. Even after the very public reunion, they didn't keep in touch. In Twyla's Instagram June 2020 post, she greeted Billy with the caption, Happy Father's Day to the absentee father. She was accused of throwing shade at her half-siblings by saying that, after reading a few things about them, she was happy that she's the most normal one in her DNA lineage. Reality shows are at least part scripted, for the simple reason that it wouldn't be entertaining if the production crew could only show their everyday life as it was. However, as in most cases, the truth was stranger than fiction, so most of the stories were half-truths and the editing process made them more interesting. In the case of Alaskan Bush people, some people believed that the family must have lived off the grid for some time in the past and everything about them had been exaggerated for shock value. Here are some of the revelations about the show and the stars from fans' detective skills, online news, and investigative reports, along with the stories shared by locals where they filmed the show. It was believed that the show was loosely based on the book, One Wave at a Time, which Billy wrote back in 2007. Allegedly, the family really lived in a remote area to sell the idea to a TV studio, and what was seen on the show was just a reenactment of their journey. During the first season, Billy claimed that their home cabin was burned by the government because it was built in the wrong area of public land, which was the start of their dramatic story. However, there was no substantial proof that the government had a hand in it, so during the second season, the narrative was changed and the government was no longer mentioned, just that the cabin burnt down. When the production crew was filming the first season, never in their wildest imagination did they think it would become one of the most watched reality TV series on cable. They thought it would be just a one-time deal, so the location they chose wasn't really that far from the highway and was pretty close to a pizza parlor. They built their brownstone encampment not in an isolated area, as they had neighbors who were actually quite annoyed by the continuous noise, and some were so ticked off that they lit fire fireworks when the crew was filming. However, the producers said that they were gunshots, as they included the episode in the show, with the narrative that people were chasing the Browns off their property. When reporters tried uncovering the truth, Alaskan state troopers said that there weren't any reported cases of gunshots in the area, only fireworks. Billy even had a dramatic line in the show, the land is not worth dying for. An online news site reported that the Brown family lived in a hotel in Hoon, Alaska while they filmed the reality TV series. They didn't actually live in their wilderness community, as Brownstone was just some sort of a TV set, a prop, to make everyone believe that they were living off-grid. It was found that the stars of the show and the production crew were booked into the icy straight lodge, and the neighbors would see them going in and out of the hotel at any hour of the day if they weren't filming. Before the family became popular as the Alaskan Bush people, they referred to themselves as the Alaskan Wilderness Family. When Billy was asked about the website they were running, long before the first episode of the reality TV show was aired, he said it was created on a whim by one of his sons to promote his children's books that he wrote. He claimed that Bam would only have the opportunity to use the internet when they went out for supplies. The site has had a great design, so people wondered if the Brown children really didn't have a concept of modern gadgets. After investigating further, fans discovered that five of the children were active YouTube YouTube users, so it totally refuted the claim in the earlier seasons of the show that the children weren't into modern technology. So, just how rich are the Alaskan Bush people? Billy Brown died at the age of 68 on the 7th of February 2021 in the family's home in Washington State after suffering a seizure. The production crew of their TV show made a series of 911 calls asking for help as Billy wasn't breathing, and CPR was administered but it didn't revive him. Apparently, Bear tried calling 911, but the calls weren't going through, so he called one of the crew to call 911. The death of Billy was announced by Bear on his Instagram account. He was cremated after a private funeral service. Upon on his death, fans were wondering how much money he'd earned from appearing on the TV show. There were reports that his asking fee for each episode was $500,000, and since the show had began airing since 2014, his earnings must have been huge. His children's fee apparently ranged from 
$40,000 to $60,000 per episode, so they must have built quite a large nest egg. Everything was provided by the production people during the filming, and with their simplistic way of living, they could live off their savings even if they stopped filming. When news of his death went public, Robert Mahone sued Billy Brown's estate for breach of contract and also filed a creditor's claim. Apparently, he invested $10,000 in Billy's Alaska Wilderness family production and was promised that he would receive 10% of the gross income from the publication of the books and movie and TV appearances, including documentaries. All this was stated in the contract made with Billy in 2009. Amy and her children haven't yet addressed the issue. According to authoritative sources, the family from Alaskan Bush people has an estimated collective net worth at over $60 million as of May 2021. The family may well live off-grid, but there's nothing off about their business new. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.